There's a cat on my roof. I can hear it walking around. Let's move forward and let's record the synth part. What I do, so what I want for the end of this song is I want it to get really grandiose. Let's try subtractive because I, I always kind of lean towards like a Juno 106 sort of thing. So it's a Ooh, that's cool. I like I like the wobbliness. Okay. Okay, this is way closer. Cover up your butt. The lyric I haven't quite figured out that ends with upper cut. I'm terrified laughing, isn't it a joke? It's never really over until the fat's over. internal distortion in the synth. The ear wibble wobbles are what I'm going for, I think. Um. Is that better? Just to have more? You know what? Actually, I think I kind of want to do... I think I'm going to record the two different octaves of it separately. Ooh, or you know what I really could do? Ooh. I'm going to try it. Okay, what I'm thinking of doing is... Playing every other note in the voicing on one track and then playing it, playing the other ones on the other track. Okay. That's only half of it though. I gotta do it again with different voicing. Blamp. Blamp. Cover up your 
Taking the bass part throws me off every single time. Okay. I'm going to now pan them, but not 100%. Don't let them land that upper. I'm terrified laughing, isn't it a joke? It's never really over till the fat tone grows. what it's all about one of the things that i want to do is put a bunch just like a bunch of like percussion layers that are just like not even like instruments necessarily just like slapping objects and just like making sounds on stuff oh you know what would be really really good i did a stream on my reed organ uh and it makes all these noises that aren't the reed organ and i kind of want to use that stuff <laughs> chill does that add something <laughs> oh yeah i like that okay yeah this is gonna be cool i like this uh oh i kind of just want to play there's a mechanical latch in there that has a spring in it it adds a lot it's definitely like a one two three and four I tried to get the double slam at the end. That wasn't that wasn't gonna happen, unfortunately. I'm proud to announce that I am now the world's foremost expert on electric reed organ fall board percussion, and you are all witness to it, and you are all uh, second in line to the throne. So congratulations on that achievement today. <laughs>
the banjo. I mean, everyone always jokes about b banjos being out of tune, but there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, the setting of the neck is like really squirrely on pretty much every banjo ever. So this is like this is like my nice banjo. Um, when I bought this banjo, I was uh, I had just played banjo in a musical, and I had never played the banjo before that, and I actually had to figure out how to play the parts I needed and get the sounds I wanted so fast. I just took the fifth string off because I was like, I don't know what to do with this. I need to get it out of here. I have like a week to figure out how to play all these songs. Here's my like songwriting banjo, which has this like funky, like you can see there's like a weird like tension bolt here. So you adjust the neck by tightening this, which pulls on it from both sides. And it literally just pulls down on the heel. And just like bend forces it back essentially, and that's how you adjust the neck angle or or don't as the case may be. It doesn't surprise me that you haven't seen one like this because like different brands, they just companies just did whatever the hell they did, wanted to do, whether it worked well or not. So it's just chaos. The world of banjos is utter chaos, um, and so they're very difficult to keep in tune. And plus, uh, because of the way, because you have the um, relatively high flexibility in the head even if you have it tightened really strong like compared to like a wooden topped instrument there's a lot of flexibility there so there's a lot more like pitch drop from the attack to the decay uh so on top of like intonation issues that happen you have this like boom 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 kind of thing going on that's that can be like as much as like a quarter tone of difference between the attack pitch so like anytime I use them with an electronic tuner, you have to like hit it and like wait for it to settle and then decide that that's where the pitch is because that's most of what people will hear, especially with like a pickup. That's why banjos are whack. Uh, weird music fact. Um, oh, here's a fun one. Uh, the chiptune rock band Anima Noguchi, who are one of the inspirations for uh, me and my friend Lizzie to start the Glowing Stars. Uh, they... When they started out, one of the earlier groups to do like instruments along with video game consoles, they used an, an NES. They programmed the songs in Famitracker on a computer and then and burned them onto EEPROM chips. On stage, they would play a song. There was like a hole cut in the front of the cartridge. They'd have to pull the chip out and take another chip and insert the chip on the thing in the socket on the circuit board to play the next song. They did that for over a year, I think, before they got their hands on a programmable uh, NES cartridge where they could just load all the song files separately. Uh, I saw them play with an NES maybe like twice. The first Glowing Stars show was opening for them and they were still using NESs then, but they were using the program cartridges and they had like three NESs lined up so they could preload songs and under the assumption that at least one would fail part way through the show. But they ditched them for laptops uh, a couple, a few years back now. Anyway, yep, live swapping EE proms uh, was uh, a staple of one of the most well-known chiptune bands of all time for a few years. There's your weird music fact. I realize that for some people, um, there are bands that play with game consoles is probably a weird music fact already, but I think this crowd is farther along than that. Um, I think I'm going to switch over and play a little marathon. I, ooh, I need to show something off, too, while I'm here. My kids love uh, Among Us. They, they can't really play it. They just like the cute little space people running around. They always say imposture. I just got this little 3D printed guy. For my shelf back here first of all it's incredible i love this but i when i got it i knew that my kids would be upset that they couldn't play with it my partner stepped up today and made these little homies there's like a whole set of them all 10 colors and they are absolutely adorable she's also considering making one that's the dead body where it's like the bottom half of it with like the little bone sticking out of it all right i don't like it here i'm leaving Bye. Oh, I'm not leaving. Oh, God. No, no, no. Let me out. Oh, God. Just activated a ton of stuff. Ooh, I'm flying. Oh, I could have gotten up there. Oh, that would have been so nice. This almost worked last time. The problem was the troopers. When the troopers came, things kind of went downhill.
The troopers haven't activated? Why is there no save here? Come on. See, that's the thing that's really getting me, is I can't save my game. So every time something happens, it's like a huge backwards step. Okay, so, oh, I found it. What opened? Oh, it's that. It's drones. Thanks, Obama. I mean, I, I don't feel like I have an opportunity to get out of here is the other issue. Oh, God, see, the tracking grenades are, like, there's way not enough space to deal with that. My God. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Oh, what? What is this all about? Oh, what the heck? Oh, I see. I'm supposed to like do this. Oh, I can get the enforcer to get the other ones. <gasps> Hi. Oh, God. See, they can actually attack me, like, melee me under here. Yeah, I guarantee you this is what they want you to do. Can I get... Can I, can I get some help? Well, that was more efficient. Oh, I probably could do this underwater too. Something's in, something's, oh, hi. Hey, what's up y'all? Nice to see you, nice to see you. Yeah, good to catch up. All right. You know, when you came by before, I just wasn't really feeling ready to talk. But I think now we can kind of get into things a little better. Yeah, go talk to that guy. He wants to chat. I don't want to chat. You need to respect my boundaries. This is definitely going to set something off. Yeah, I was like, there's no way this is not... Well, I wonder what's going to happen in this room. Okay, you're friendly. There's the shotgun. You're not friendly. Yeah, that Bob doesn't care about me, which presumably means he's chill. Let's. Oh, God. I got ripped up pretty quickly. Yeah. Shoot. That was helpful. Thanks, Enforcers. Way on the other side of there. Yeah, we can just do this for a while. That's cool. The Yeah, having the Enforcers over there is kind of funny because pretty much nothing is getting to me because the Enforcers are hitting them before I even can. Stuff is just, like, burning before I even get to uh, attack it. I am probably going to sell my vibraphone. It just takes up a lot of space, and I love it, but I don't use it enough. And someday I want to upgrade to a nicer one. Um, the one I have is nice, but it's, like, you know, not, like, fancy. And someday I want to get a fancy one. Uh, but right now I just need the space. Well, you redeemed an instrument demo. And I'm guessing for the vibraphone. So this is my vibraphone. It is a Genco, probably from the 60s. Um, it's not super fancy, but it sounds nice. So one of the cool things about the vibraphone and all mallet percussion is the that the choice of mallet is like a super, super important part of the sound that you get. And I my collection of mallets is pretty 
uh, small compared to anyone that does percussion more seriously uh, or a contra percussion, percussion at least. It's kind of a harder one. This is a really soft one and it brings out different harmonics. The vibraphone is unique among mallet instruments in that it has a damper pedal like a piano does. So I can... One of the coolest features of the vibraphone is the motor. And unfortunately the belt on the motor on this is busted. These resonator tubes underneath uh, are cut to specific lengths that make them harmonically resonant with the pitches that they're under. And then when the motor is running, it takes these little flaps and spins them. The vibraphone before I got it was apparently played in musicals a lot. Um, when I got it, I used it in a bunch of solo shows and I used it with a band that I was in briefly called um, High Five Spirit. One of my favorite things to do with the vibraphone is to bow it. It's an effect that I use way more than I should. Uh, both when I write and when I just play on my own. Ali, you should look away before you see how I treat my bass bow, probably. It takes a second to get it to speak. <laughs> and if you want to switch between accidentals and like black keys, quote unquote, and white keys, you have to switch the bow to the other side. And one of the things that I did in my band, I had this made. It's a guitar pickup just in a block of wood. I could bow one note on the vibraphone and hold the block close enough that it would pick up the bar and it would become this like big blooming chord. That's my vibraphone demo for you. <gasps> this is my level. This is Emerald City Citizens. And I actually tried to play this on stream one. Wow. Well, <laughs> off to a start. Um, I tried to play this on stream once before, but I didn't have the plugin installed for the correct AI. So it went really badly. Uh, like it just wasn't interesting because the aliens wouldn't activate. Oh, we're close. We're close. There's only a few left at this point. A little faster. There we go. Oh. That's it. Gotta go. Oh, okay. I think that's it for me for tonight. Oh, I didn't save my game. Oh, I really needed to save there. Well, heck. All right. <laughs> oh no. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. This is like, um. This is very Groundhog Day. Why don't you go attack some aliens? Alright, can I speedrun this? So, I mean, you can't really speedrun it, right? I mean, I guess. Okay, I, you know what? I have one idea for how to speedrun this. It would be hitting the trigger for the final thing the second, as soon as you can. Uh, th this is the latest version of Kill Them All. When I participated, I only participated in the first, maybe the second installment. Um, and Ryoko redistributed all of the maps uh, into different chapters based on difficulty. And we're in chapter three right now. Uh, I have maps, I have four maps of, across six chapters. My maps are like 10th grade, Tigger's Reason, 
uh, Zimbabwe 13 or whatever, whatever the number is, I don't even remember. Um, and this one, Emerald City Citizens. And actually, speaking of musical theater, uh, that's where this name came from. Uh, we were doing a production of The Wiz, and I was working on this map. So I guess that actually dates this map to later than I thought. Uh, probably like 2000... Oh no, I guess it's still like 2007 maybe, something like that. I don't know. Honestly, this phase of the map before the final doors open is still so weird because you like it's kind of at the point where Stuff is stacking up to the point where you can't necessarily track everything that's happening um, And so you don't really get a good handle on the shape of the room at this phase uh, But then once once the whole map opens up You kind of know what the whole map looks like. I love this with them all marching up the stairs Right, now I know that the other side of the map has opened up and I'm getting hit from over there. This whole like no 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 aliens land over here. Yeah, the first the my my first map is is Tigger's Reason. Tigger's Reason is the one that has um there go. Uh, it starts you're on like a little platform uh, Facing some lava. There's like a shotgun and some and an SMG and You have to like jump onto a ledge and fight a bunch of aliens on the ledge and then um, uh, There's like a big round room with a bunch of aliens in it uh, It was in fact the first one that I made Throw that in there. See what it hits. Alright, now we're talking. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I'll, I'll go for that. Oh god, what is shooting at me? Have those bolts been following me this entire time? I think these compiler bolts have been following me this entire time. Uh. There we go. Hey, this worked. This was a lot faster. Uh, I probably should have let that continue to happen. Actually, that would have really sped things up. How many Mother of All Hunters were there in play at once? Unlocked. Yay. All right. I am not making this mistake again. I did it. <laughs> okay. That's it for tonight. I got to go to bed. Thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you to new followers. And thank you to new subs. And uh, we all want to go to bed. <laughs>